Welcome to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. Are you doing the best for your client to help them create their legacy? Are you creating a plan that goes far beyond finances to help people ensure that it becomes the driving force behind all decisions? On this podcast, hosts Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller will help you with growing your practice and your client's peace of mind. Together, they bring the best and brightest minds to share with you how to help your clients develop their best legacy. And now, here are your hosts, Katie Beth and Stan. Welcome back to the Legacy Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Beth Hand, and my guest today is the owner of Step Ahead Financial, Stephen Step. Stephen, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So before we dive in with all of the questions I have for you, I was hoping you could take just a couple of minutes and talk to our listeners a little bit about what you do and what it is that really inspired you to get into this industry. Well, in a general way, I'm a financial planner, but in I, I actually don't sell stocks and bonds or mutual funds or do assets under management. I leave that to people who are more risk oriented. But I generally help people in all other areas of financial planning, including uh, life insurance, annuities, retirement plans, IRAs, and 401ks. And one of my specialties is something called Bank on Yourself. I'm one of 200 agents nationwide who are well-trained and have done it over 20 years, where we teach people how to be their own source of their own financing. So eliminate the banks that we oftentimes are like snakes and dragons for people and are there to loan you money when you don't really need it. But when you really do, they're they're not there to help you out. And so it's great to be able to have your own source of financing. And we use high cash value life insurance and annuities to accomplish that. And, And that's my main thing. But any type of IRAs, any type of retirement planning, 401k planning, life insurance planning, tax planning, we we also help our clients with. That's great. Yes, I love the tagline that you have on your LinkedIn profile that talks about as a bank on yourself person, I help you achieve your financial goals without taking any unnecessary risk. So obviously that is a source of relief for a lot of people. Talk to us, who is your ideal client? Who are you best suited to serve? Probably our ideal client is anyone who's 30 to 60 who's saving for retirement. They're trying to help their kids with college without spending their own retirement on it. I just went to my 45th college reunion and the tuition there is $67,000 a year. So how most families can do that for one or two kids without taking away from their own retirement is is one of the goals and and something that's literally very hard for many families and they don't really attack it until it's almost too late. So that's one area. And most of our clients are um, have kids that will one day go to college. So they're anywhere between 30, 40, 50, up to 60 years old. And that's one of their main goals. But also anybody who's saving for retirement, who doesn't like the ups and downs of the market, who doesn't want to pay very high fees that are typically associated with 401ks and other retirement plans. They don't want to pay stockbrokers to to watch the market go up and down and and take out fees as well. And they're kind of tired of that rat race. And they've usually lost money in the market at some point. And every six or seven years, the market takes a, a major downturn and then they have half of what they used to have. And most people are not that good at playing the market, so to speak. And at retirement, the other thing that can happen is oftentimes people, the five years before retirement and the five years after retirement are very critical times when you don't want to lose money because it will mean you have to live on substantially less money in retirement as a result. And you're not young enough to have time on your side to get that money back. And so we try to help people avoid that that whole scenario that's tied up. And most people take a lot more risk and have a lot more debt than they would be comfortable if you asked them those kind of questions and then showed them their own numbers. They're actually uncomfortable where they are and they want to move forward in a different way. 
Yeah, you may have just touched on this, but I know you've been in this business for over 26 years doing financial planning and retirement planning. What are some of the mistakes that you have seen people make when it comes to planning? What are some of the things that you have seen over and over? Um, number one, reliance on risky items and the market in general. Some people are really good at it. Some people aren't. And some people just sit. A lot of our clients, most of their wealth is tied up in their 401k. And they don't realize that's one day going to be taxable. A lot of times I'll ask a client who has, say, a million dollars in a 401k, how much of that is yours? And then, of course, we'll say all of it. And then we'll talk about, well, no, it's going to be taxed at some point. So what do you think the tax rate will be when you're taking it out? And where do you think tax rates are headed? And wouldn't it be smarter to pay the taxes now and get it into something tax-free and also eliminate the risk of the market? Most people think that they have to take substantial risk in order to get ahead financially. And really the opposite is true. The be My best clients are the ones who understand the importance of saving 10 or 15 or 20 percent of what they make and putting that money away in a safe, hopefully tax-free way, as opposed to we look at the market as a, a casino. And I own stocks and bonds. I know most of our clients do as well. It's really more like how much of a percentage of their total wealth is tied up in something like that and how much of their total wealth is involved in something that could be a drop 30 to 50 percent in a few weeks' time and take years, 10, 15, 17 years to get back to where they were. Yeah, absolutely. I love every, all of the nuggets of wisdom in what you just said. Such great advice and such a painful conversation, I would think, as a client to realize that the money you've put in your 401k, you didn't realize is taxable. So I love what you said about what do you think think the tax rate is now and where do you think it's headed? That's such a gentle way of breaking such kind of bad news to a client and really giving them a perspective of, I need to do something. I can't just rely on this for forever. So I'd love that. I've also, talked to, yeah. Oh yeah. Also the, one of my pet peeves is the amount of fees that people are paying. If mm -hmm. they have a 401k and it's with managed money, it's very typical that people are paying two and three and even higher percent right off the top every year, whether the market goes up or down. And I try to show people that that doesn't sound like a lot in any one year, right? But if you take 2% off the top for 50 years, that's half of the money that would have been in your retirement plan went to your broker. And are they really doing such a great job for you that it's worth giving them half of your retirement to plan? And, and when most people, and a lot of these fees aren't even disclosed, they're just not even very clear, you actually have to dig into the information. And a lot of times that's what we'll do is we'll dig out all that information for our client and show them you're paying like two, two and a half percent, three percent, right off the top, whether the market goes up or down. And I, I tell people all the time, if it's higher than that, there's almost no way that the uh, account in total is going to generate the kind of growth that you need to have to hit those financial goals at retirement. And it's one of the reasons why a huge majority of people retire with less than a half a million dollars, which is not going to go very far in today's inflation, right? Not going to go very far. And when you factor in medical costs and just the cost to live, let alone have a full, nice retirement where you can travel. I know you love to travel, but where you can travel and do the things that you were saving up for to begin with. Right. Do you ever have clients that are shocked by the realization and the reality of those two and three percent fees that are hidden in there and what that really looks like? What are the client reactions when you really walk them through that? Yeah, sometimes it's shock. Sometimes it's disbelief. And a lot of times that shock and disbelief turns into anger. <laughs> I, I think that's how I would Which is feel actually about a good you. thing for me. That's yeah, for them yeah. at the moment, but it helps get them to move and, and look at it differently and do something differently. Absolutely. Okay. So to take a little bit of a turn, 
Beyond financial planning, you're also a member of the Legacy Leaders Network, and you put a big emphasis on the importance of legacy planning as well. So talk to us a little bit about how the idea of legacy impacts the work that you do. I've kind of learned in my own situation and with some of my clients who are better off and they won the finance part one way or another. They've had good salaries or good income. They've been excellent savers for a long period of time. They might be done with paying for kids' college. And they're actually financially in a pretty good state. And they may or may not have done the trust work that they should do in terms of the estate planning. And they're really looking beyond both of those things. They're looking at um, what we like to call the third piece of that pyramid. And they're trying to actually plan out beyond their own retirement in terms of their own estate planning, their own plan giving, and the things that they would like to do to inspire future generations and also the charities and causes that they're a big believer in. So one of the goals that I have for legacy planning is to inform and inspire our children about what's important to us and our families and have that live on in in future generations. Very often in the second or third generation, things fall apart and the same values that help propel that family to be in a good spot are by the third generation have been long um, forgotten. The second thing I'm trying to do um, with my clients that are in that situation is um, plan beyond their own finances in terms of plan giving and ways that they might be able to help their favorite charity or causes both now and in the future in a way that because it's coming out of their future estate and also is is going to be very helpful to those causes while they're alive, but even that after they're gone as well. Yeah, that's a great answer. And we certainly see the same type of thing in the estate planning world where maybe it's a an older generation family member that formed the bid business or all of those things. But when you're passing down wealth like that without any of the stories and the work ethic and all of those things behind it, we've really seen how that can sometimes have when you pass down wealth without all of those other pieces, it can actually have a, a very negative impact on younger generation. And so I love that you're focused on bringing in that legacy aspect beyond just the financial planning. The financial planning is certainly extremely important, uh, but I love that you're bringing in that legacy aspect as well to make sure that all of the work and the saving and the building that these people have done really goes to make a positive impact on younger generations and not a negative impact on younger generations. So that is great stuff and something pretty unique in the financial planning world. The idea of legacy, I feel like, is just starting to really move forward. So I love that you're in on the cutting edge of that, certainly. All right. So we touched on a couple of different things. I do have just a few more questions for you. One is for those that are listening that maybe have not done any financial planning or retirement planning that want to get connected with you, what does walk us through just a quick step-by-step of what that process looks like to get with you and and get that process started? Got it. Primarily, um, it's meeting with us at least a couple of times. Normally, it starts out with a, a pretty short conversation. We call it a 10-minute call, but it often goes 30 minutes. We don't put a time limit on it, but um, sometimes people are scared of talking to a new financial planner for more than 30 minutes. But So we'll have an intro call where we're trying to make sure they're a good fit for us and that we can help them and that we're on the same page. I'm in a position where I can't really take more than 100 new clients in any given year without giving up service and things like that to our our current clients. So that's one aspect. Then usually, if all goes well with that, we'll set up a meeting where I'm giving them a lot more information about my practice and how we work and then turning it around and I'm asking them all the questions that we need to be able to put together a plan with different options for them. And then usually the third, if that all goes well, we put together and and there's ways that we can help them. We'll set up a third appointment where we're actually presenting choices and alternatives from the way we do it. And hopefully they will agree 
And then beyond that, we're helping them, you know, implement and, and service those plans. Fantastic. So a very easy process. If you're listening and you've not gotten any financial planning done, if you are confused about maybe where you are with your retirement planning, uh, we encourage you to reach out to Stephen and get started. It's not a scary process. The step-by-step -step sounds very easy. I love the idea of the 30-minute introductory call. So we encourage our listeners, if that's something you're looking for, we'll tell you in just a minute how to get connected to Stephen so you can get started. So my final question for you, Stephen, and this is a big one, so put your thinking cap on. Through all of the work that you do with all of the planning and helping these people and their families, what is it that you hope your legacy will be? Wow, that's a tough one. You know, I'm still really putting that together. And it's really been over the past three or four years that I've been giving it more serious thought. Um, I'm very involved with my synagogue. So helping them is certainly one thing that um, I want to continue to do. And uh, even when I'm not around, would like to be able to, to see them thrive and, and prosper as well. In my own family, I have a daughter who's amazing, and I want her to fully understand what the legacy of, of both me and her grandparents have been and how that's come about and why it's important and why it's important to continue to build on that and save on that as opposed to maybe just spend it all, which happens a lot. And the, right now, those are my two biggest you know, concerns, but uh, moving forward, I actually plan to to add on and build on that. And that's part of the learning I'm doing with the legacy planners group. That's awesome. No, that's a really good answer. I'd, I'd love that. And um, thank you just for all of the, the work that you do trying to help people. I love that you are also working on your legacy with your own family and your own faith as well. I think that's a really power test, powerful testament to just who you are as a person. So for everybody who has been listening today, I want to thank you all for joining us. As always, I'm your host, Katie Beth Hand, and my guest today is financial planning and retirement planning expert, Stephen Stepp. If you're ready to get connected with Stephen, you can email him at stephenstep at sbcglobal.net, or you can call anytime at 800-245-4677. We'll also link both of those things in the show notes for you so you guys can be sure to get connected. Stephen, thank you again so much for joining me today. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, and it was a pleasure speaking with you as well. You've been listening to the Legacy Leaders Podcast with Katie Beth Hand and Stan Miller. For more information on them and the show, please visit PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. If you like what you've learned today, do share the program with your friends and subscribe wherever podcasts are found.